So today was a, an interesting day to say the least. Um, we launched, um, or at least privately launched our beta uh, product Quinn that um, I'm doing with Andrew Young, who is a prominent uh, host um, for events uh, in the tech community, especially in New York. And so over the past, I would say a uh, week now, we've been working um, really fast to get a MVP out for an event that we had today, um, February 8th. Um, but we had a really short amount of time to do it. And so we had to act really fast. Um, and so I, I kind of want to walk through what our designs and our process looked like to get to the point that we landed today, um, launching that app at the event. And I want to give you a little bit of insight of what it really looks like to kind of launch that first initial product, um, that first initial time, especially at a time where it's an event where you're really going to see a concentrated amount of users and uh, usage in that time of, of the event. So I want to first walk through um, what our Figma process looked like and explain the app a little bit more in detail. So what we are looking to design and build was basically a mobile app um, that allows people to first off obviously sign up through Google. Um, and then we take you to a, a feed here where this would basically be your feed for the event. where you would be able to track all the interactions you've had inside that event with different people. And so the idea is that when you go to these kind of networking events or um, conferences, you often talk to a lot of people. You often get a lot of LinkedIn connections um, and potential other social connections, but you don't really actually remember who you talk to, what you talk to them about, um, or who you need to follow up with most importantly. And so that's what this app is focused on, making that experience as fun and easy as possible. So once you um, scan that person's QR code, you'll be given a unique QR code. You guys scan each other's QR code. And then you'll be, you'll be taken to the interaction page where you'll be able to see a preview of some of those, that person's, um, you know, bio, some of their socials, and then some quick, quick action buttons that you can take action on right away. So you don't need to, you know, be taking notes necessarily in the meeting. And this will also change the color on the feed. So if you click a purple, it will change it to purple and give you a little icon to let you know that you did that. And then on top of that, um, you can take notes. So just a little note preview that will show up on the dashboard that you can also click in here to see um, in full. And so um, we basically uh, built this entire app in the last three days using Bubble. And I'll, and I'll walk through kind of that process a little bit more. Um, but to start, I want to kind of show like the iterations that we went through, um, starting with the, the wait list. So uh, the waitlist was an interesting thing because, again, we had about a week to define the brand. Um, and this brand definitely came a long way from when we started, for better or for worse, is kind of into the eyes of the beholder. So let me pull up our chat here. So I believe our very first uh, mock-up looks something like this. Um, ignore the random placements, but it generally was... Um, pretty much pretty different looking look and feel um, and completely different brand. So we are experimenting with some kind of circular logo like this. Um, also experiencing what, what it looked like with having cards that were full images. Um, also experiencing with just different colors and gradients and different you know fonts and backgrounds. So there was a lot of experimenting to even get to that point. I mean, even before that, we can take you back to my original wireframe, how I looked, thought the uh, the homepage should look like I was, I was envisioning some kind of timeline like thing, which yes, give or take played out. Um, and this is some of our inspo as well. So, um, as you can see, super list was a really big inspo for us, um, using some of their poppy colors, um, the fonts, but it was still something that was like modern professional. So we really liked that, like that approach and obviously super list is a beautifully designed product. Um, and just taking some other inspos that we've, we found is always important. So going back to the archive, um, we started playing around with some more social aspects. Um, so using animojis and stuff like that to kind of give a more fun vibe to it. Um, but ultimately we felt that um, having a more professional uh, feel that didn't feel too so, uh, consumery and socially would be a good thing. And so we started pulling it back a bit more into just um, normal profile pictures, cleaning it up. 
And you can kind of see the progression, small iteration over small iteration. We start playing around with different, um, you know, card previews. Um, we even started playing around with what, what event kind of list could look like, though we decided that was overused. Um, and then finally, we weren't really happy where things were. Um, we almost finalized this as the logo, um, which is very, I would say, very different to what we have now, which I think, honestly, um, in hindsight, it's definitely for the better. At, at, at a time, I really liked this logo, but um, I started experimenting with, with, with more what a more basic look like um, could look like and uh, started kind of doing these mock-ups for the team of experimenting, experimenting with what some color could look like, simplifying the fonts, um, and just having a more clear view, also making these a little bit smaller. Um, and, you know, definitely not to my credit, the team executed really well on that, um, coming up with uh, what we have now. So again, coming back to the mobile app here, you can see a much more friendlier um, approach. We used um, the timeline to also have some of these emojis here, which added a little more of a, um, yeah, socially aspect to it without keeping it too uh, socially. I did some date tags here so you're able to quickly um, skip through. Um, and then obviously the logo changed. So we, we went with something a little more, um, I would say professional, um, less abstract. It's kind of just a cue, um, kind of connecting the dots. So just a little fun play on that using the black, which we thought was really clean. Uh, and then yeah, just trying to design some more screens that kind of fit that. So this is like after the event, you'd see um, how many connections you had and what you, who you need to follow up with and all that stuff. Um, so that was kind of the progression for, as far as the UI and UX goes. The website, um, similarly, uh, we started playing around with something more abstract when it came to this old brand. Um, so originally I designed something that looked like this, um, kind of going for like an Apple-ish aesthetic, but more abstract. Um, I think you can probably tell that once my designers kind of come in and do their thing, it ends up looking a lot better. And so we started playing around with this idea. In fact, we actually built this and we were going to uh, go ahead with something around these lines, um, probably something like this. And last minute, uh, we decided mainly to Andrew's credit that um, we could do better. And so we ended up designing this here, which ended up being the pretty much the final website. Um, so pretty, some, pretty similar to this, um, which is gonna be our wait list which you can go now to uh, quinnapp.com to check out. And uh, yeah, so this is this is the wait list that we use and then had some cool like, little designs to go with socials and all that. So that was that first process. And let me tell you, uh, it was pretty stressful. We had uh, less than a week to get this up because we wanted to launch for this event that we had, which was a thousand people um, that RSVP'd. So we really wanted to get that out. Um, so, Moving on now to kind of what that like launch process looked like. So the best place I kind of can show you from a timeline is is Twitter. So we officially kind of launched the waitlist February 6th, which is really just two days ago. Um, and so me and Andrew and some of the people on my team uh, definitely pushed this pretty uh, heavy. As you can see, Andrew right here reposted this. Um, but also promoted it here for the first time as well. And so this would take people to the waitlist that we created. This is Webflow, if you guys are wondering. And yeah, pretty simple, just basically to collect emails. Um, and in the first uh, day, we were able to get around 300 waitlist emails, which was which was fine. To be honest, uh, it doesn't waitlist numbers are pretty irrelevant whether they're super high or super low. Um, a lot of it can be driven up by hype. But on the flip side, um, a lot of it could be low because they, the product just hasn't even come out yet. So didn't mean too much to us, but it was good to just kind of get a feel for, for what was out there and be able to collect some emails. Um, so once we launched that, um, we were feeling pretty good about things. And it was, decided, it was, it was time to now actually build this thing. And so in the span of, uh, yeah, as I said, pretty much two to three days, um, we built this um, web, web experience in Bubble, uh, which we then later turned into a PWI. Um, 
And you know how it works is pretty simple. The core functionality is that you use a QR code scanner within the app to then scan people's QR codes once you got to the event to create these interactions. You'd also scan the QR code at the event to actually join the event on your phone. And so to give you kind of a preview of what this actually looks like building built in bubble. So how the app works, um, pretty general is, uh, you have your profile picture page where you can go and, uh, you know, customize your profile, everything from your title to description to all your social links. Um, my profile isn't really built out, so it looks pretty boring. You can also add cool little blocks here. So, you know, for example, and start adding some of these things in to kind of customize your profile more. Um, you know, I can go here, CEO at Chrome, add my um, Twitter. site, et cetera, et cetera. Save that. And then that will show up on my feed. On the mobile, it looks a little bit smaller. That's why the padding is a, a little bit off here. But you get the point. And so now that I uh, I was already in the event that was happening today, so I scanned that. Um, but let's say I met somebody at the event. So um, I have a QR code here of just uh, one of my friend's QR codes, um, Eric, who I'm going to just test to see um, and show you how this works. So when I click this plus here, I will have two options. It's using my Mac camera. Uh, I can either scan someone else's QR code or they can scan my QR code for the sake of this. I'm going to go with this. It's going to try to scan this here. And there we go. So with a little confetti, now I have Eric who uh, I just connected with. And I have a few options here. One, I can set a follow-up um, you know, reminder to myself. And then I can take some notes. So this is a cool test. Um, and if I wanted to, I could also see all the past interactions I have with Eric. So you can see I have technically two. Um, and if I go back to the dashboard, you can see that this interaction from 11.58, which is the time right now, with my little preview of the notes. So essentially, um, that's how that works. Um, and, and that's what we built. So at the end, by the end of the event, we had around 341 interactions with 217 users, um, which was pretty good, honestly, uh, given that the event was not too big. I don't think um, all 1,000 people showed up, probably something more like four or 500. So roughly half the people actually got the app. Um, and then we had uh, around 341 interactions. So pretty good. Um, Really, the next steps now for us are going to be gathering as much feedback as we can. Obviously, things didn't go perfectly, and that was expected. And so I'm really going to spend the next few days with the team and Andrew and myself to go through everything and try to gather as much feedback as we can from all the users. Um, but I wanted to kind of shoot this video just to kind of share the behind the scenes. Um, at the same time, while things did go well, and we did you know, actually get it out in time, which I'm super happy about. You know, I, I also think that looking at the data going through this, obviously not every single person signed up for one. And second off, uh, there should have probably been a lot more interactions given that people are, are meeting, you know, 10, 10, 15, 20 people per night per person at this event. And so going through the data, it was pretty clear that um, not sometimes people would only create one interaction and stop or some people did none. Some people did five, some people did 10. And so there's obviously some things to figure out here on, on, on why people stopped at only one, why people um, didn't do any, um, what were some of the, the friction points, because there definitely were some. Um, and some of the use cases, that, and some of the edge cases that we need to think through, like um, what happens when only one person has a QR code? We've obviously built a flow for that, but is there a way to make that experience really easy so that if someone interacts with somebody that doesn't have the app, that they can easily save the interaction without needing to sign up. And so these are all things that uh, will help these numbers go up. But I just wanted to be kind of transparent with the numbers and how things went. Um, and, you know, this video is a little bit all over the place, but I'll do a better job of kind of showing the week to week, month to month progress on Twitter with some more numbers um, as I can share. So appreciate um, the support. If you do want to sign up for the waitlist, you can find that at Quinn with two N's app.com. And uh, eventually we will be looking for more event managers to host events with this. So feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Thanks.